My name is John Bravo, and I'm the creator of the open source Serial Wombat Project. I'm also an embedded systems consultant and medical device development consultant. So give me a call if you need professional help with one of those areas. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Serial Wombat 18AB's high frequency servo pin mode. Uh, this pin mode is a user request from Dan in Pennsylvania. And Dan likes to fly high end, uh, really twitchy, high performance helicopters. And it turns out that in order to control a helicopter like that, you need a high performance servo. I didn't know about these until Dan told me about them. And he said, hey, I'd like to be able to drive these with an Arduino, but I can't find any good code to do it. So I looked at it and I said, well, it's not too far off of kind of a mix between the Serial Wombat 18AB's PWM mode and the servo mode. So let's see if we can come up with a pin mode that makes that easy. And it worked. So these servos are a little bit different than your garden variety sort. Uh, first of all, they're very expensive. I bought one that was like 65 bucks. So, you know, maybe buy a Serial Wombat chip or two if you use this pin mode, support me a little bit. Because uh, I actually don't need a servo like this, but you can't test it if you don't have one. So I bought one. Aside from being very expensive, they are very high performance. Uh, unlike your typical servos, which get updated 50 times per second, these get updated 300 times or 600 times per second. And in order to do that, you can't fit a normal servo pulse width of uh, half a millisecond to two and a half milliseconds into something you update 600 times per second. So the pulse widths are much narrower. So I created a pin mode. The Serial Wombat 18AB can generate up to six of these on the high performance digital capable pins. And this pin mode, aside from a couple of initializations that are very slightly different, has all the same interfaces as the normal servo pin mode. So I think that you'll probably find that this is one of the easiest and fastest ways to be able to control a high-speed servo from a PC or a Raspberry Pi or an Arduino. So let's take a look at it now. So for our setup here today, we have the DS565X uh, high-frequency servo from KST. And just for reference, uh, we've got one of the SG90 uh, Garden variety, super cheap, super generic, super fun flea market servos that are ubiquitous. So we're going to be running our Arduino code on a Node MCU clone. That will feed into a Serial Wombat 18AB chip via I squared C lines. And the pin 19 will come out to a the KST servo. And pin 18 will come out to the SG90 servo. And for our power supply, we'll be driving this off of a bench top power supply set at six volts. Uh, and the breakout board that you're seeing here is one of the new Serial Wombat products uh, that's available on Amazon. It simply takes uh, power and ground from a power supply, provides those on a bus to up to 15 servos, and provides another uh, set of headers that connect up to the, the signal pins on the servos. So it makes it really fast and easy to wire something like this up. Note that we used one of our ground pins to connect back to the Serial Wombat board so that we've got a good ground for our, uh, so that we've got a good ground for our signal reference. Okay, let's take a quick look at the sketch that we'll be using to drive this. Uh, this is available under the examples, Serial Wombat uh, sketch, that will come out with the newest Arduino library that'll come out sometime in uh, December. So uh, we're gonna include SerialWombat.h. We're gonna instantiate a Serial Wombat chip. We'll instantiate a Serial Wombat servo for the boring normal servo. That's the little $1 uh, SG90. And then we'll instantiate a Serial Wombat high frequency servo, which is a high, a exciting high frequency servo. Uh, then in our setup, we're going to call wire begin. That'll get the I squared and C bus running. We're going to say serial wombat begin, and we'll give it the address 0x6b because it doesn't have an address uh, resistor in place. Uh, then we will do an attach on the existing on the exciting high frequency servo. 
We're going to hook it up to pin 19 and we'll tell it a minimum pulse width of 500, a maximum pulse width of 1,000. And hopefully that'll be, uh, hopefully that'll be about right. Uh, the pulse widths, they publish a center value, but I haven't seen an official range of high to low for that uh, DS565X. <coughs> the place where this deviates a little bit from the standard attach is that we also have to tell it for this high frequency servo, how often should we send the pulses? And the published documentation is uh, 560 hertz on the back of the box. So we, we call that. So this completes the initialization in the simplest form for the high frequency servo. And then we'll go ahead and uh, attach the boring normal servo using standard parameters to pin 18 of the serial wombat chip. We'll declare a global position variable. And in our loop, we'll just add 1,000 to that each time. So it'll roll up to 65,000 and then roll back over. And we'll set using the serial wombat specific uh, write 16 bit function, we will set the position of both the exciting high frequency servo and the boring normal, normal servo to whatever the position value is. So that's a 16 bit value. And then we'll delay 50 uh, milliseconds before we write the next update. So let's upload that and see how it goes. And we can see the servos are running as expected. So that's very positive. Uh, just to show the difference, we will unplug the high frequency servo and we will plug the uh, standard servo pulse driver into it. And you can see it goes over to the side and malfunctions. It just generally doesn't work right. So it definitely won't work with the 50 hertz uh, standard reset. And I'm taking a look, I'm keeping an eye on the current over here. Whatever the servo does, it's smart enough that it's not trying to tear itself apart. It recognizes when it hits a limit and stops. So we'll plug that back in where it belongs. Plug that back in where it belongs. And now just for fun, let's take a look at the uh, pulses that are coming out of there. We're going to use the Salier uh, logic analyzer. And I will clip on to pin 19, which is our high frequency servo. And channel 2 of the logic analyzer will hook up to pin 18, which is our boring normal servo. Okay, so here we have our Salier open. We're going to enable both channel 0 and channel 1. And hit go. And what we can see here is pretty much exactly what we expect. We're getting far more pulses on the high frequency servo than we are on the normal boring servo. And you can see that we've got a delay of 20 milliseconds uh, on the low speed standard servo, a pulse width at the point we captured of about one and a half milliseconds. On this uh, other one, if we take a look at this, the frequency <coughs> is right at the nominal value, 556 hertz. And we are getting a pulse width of about 774 microseconds. So definitely what we see on the scope matches up with what we expected to see. So I hope that you uh, found this video interesting. Uh, I hope you take two things from it. First, that the Serial Wombat chip can drive high-frequency servos. And secondly, that I listen to the users. And that if you have a suggestion for a generally applicable uh, embedded systems pin mode that you say, boy, this would be useful to offload off of my Raspberry Pi or my Arduino sketch and let the Serial Wombat firmware take care of this, I can do that. So in development right now, for instance, are PS2 keyboard drivers. That's the IBM PS2, not the PlayStation. And uh, the uh, other thing that I'm uh, that is under consideration right now is a zero crossing sensor that's tied in with PWM that would uh, would allow uh, control of 
uh, AC devices through the proper isolation circuitry. So uh, anyway, if you have a, a question or a comment, you're using some high frequency servos, uh, leave me a comment in the uh, area below. And uh, if you have a suggestion for some new pin modes, uh, definitely leave those in the comments as well. If you haven't subscribed yet and you're a Serial Wombat Chip user, I'd highly recommend that. Uh, this is how I push out all of the information and video documentation. This is the best place to get notifications when there's new firmware updates or Arduino library updates or C Sharp updates or whatever platform you're using. So uh, that's all for today. And everybody have fun and keep making stuff. The Serial Wombat firmware is available on GitHub and is constantly being updated. Subscribe below so that you can see the latest features and videos that come out as we fix bugs and add new features. The Serial Wombat open source project was created by Broadwell Consulting Incorporated. Broadwell Consulting Incorporated provides help developing medical devices with a focus on developing embedded firmware, which is compliant with IEC 62304, ISO 14971, and ISO 13485, as well as remediation assistance for products already in production. For more information, contact John at Broadwell Consulting. Support requests for Serial Wombat should be sent to help at serialwombat.com and will be answered on an as-available basis. Also, feel free to leave your question in the comments below.